Ooh, so part 20. I really never imagined that this complete boring toss would get to 20 parts and we're not even finished yet. We're kind of getting there. Uh, yeah, so let's just get on with it. So the last thing that I think that we need to do really for now on the mix form is to complete the consume button which uh, doesn't do anything at the moment. If we close this down and have a little look at the theory behind the consume button, as you can see it is disabled at the moment but when we create a mix like so, the consume button is enabled and as I mentioned it doesn't do anything right now. But the idea is that we want to be able to have the choice between aborting this and just cancelling it or if we actually make the mix click the consume button and basically what it'll do is it'll go through all of the ingredients that we have um, selected down here and of course we would have had to have select exactly which bottle we're going to be taking it from so we select that uh, we're taking this 7.2 percent nick multi bottle 10 and uh, when we hit the consume button it should add this 4.17 to the amount of that bottle that we have used. Therefore it will subtract 4.17 from what is left. So let's get around to uh, doing the bit of code that's going to uh, well do that. So let's open the mix form in design view and click on the consume button and let's give it an on click handler. In the code builder we're going to stick in a bit of code, which I will do right now. So this probably will end up sort of a medium length bit of code for this button. Um, therefore, I'm breaking it down into parts. We can ignore all definitions at the top. They're really dull. Yep, I just said it. They're really dull. They're just definitions. Um, we are setting the mix ID variable to whatever the ID of this mix is. And we're setting a um, a string variable to an empty string. Basically once we have get to hitting the consume button it would have saved everything that we have created in our mix to the database. So what we need to do is we need to grab back out of the ingredients, the, the mix ingredients table, everything that um, we have just decided on on our mix. So what it's going to do is it's going to bring out the mix ingredient stock names and there's three of those, there's one, two, three and it's going to pull out the relevant volumes or the amount of those that we are going to use or have used maybe by now. Uh, so again there's three of those, one, two, three and it's pulling that out of the mix ingredient where the mix ID essentially equals what uh, the mixes we're looking at. So now uh, we're going to open up that as a record set and we're going to loop through the record set and basically because we're doing the same thing for each of these uh, three possible bottles that we've used for each ingredient we're just going to loop through the same bit of code three times and just change which of these bottles we're looking at. The first time will be one, second time will be two and the third time will be three. So ignoring that for a minute because they're basically doing all the same thing. We're saying that if there is something in the name of this particular bottle uh, mix ingredient stock name whichever way you want to call it as long as it has a name, uh, it means that we've filled it out and we've probably used it. If it's empty then, well, we didn't do something right and uh, yeah, we just want it to ignore it basically. <laughs> um, we're going to then pluck out from that mix ingredient stock name both the name of the ingredient and also the order ID. Now, to show you why, let's minimize this a minute. And let's open up the mix ingredients table. So this is the recipe that we just created and you can see that um, what we're storing in this table and we've only selected nicotine for now is uh, the actual ingredient name followed by the underscore followed by the order ID to uniquely identify that bottle and that comes from our stock table. And if we open that up, we can see that basically that is built from all of this list of names. And then it has a 
where is it? A R R E O. Oh, here, right next to it. <laughs> it has a stock order ID uh, tacked onto the end of it. So if we scroll down here, we can see that is the actual bottle that we used. Now that I'm thinking about this, I may, in fact, I will at some point get around to just removing this stock order ID. It's a sort of hangover from the, the, the Excel thing, and it's utterly pointless. We don't need it. The only reason it's there is so that we can uniquely identify um, you know, various ones. What I will change it to is I will uh, get rid of the stock order ID, and rather than appending that at the after, in, after the underscore at the end of the name, is I will just append this unique record ID for the ingredient. So that's going to work a lot better. But we can kind of ignore that for now. The basic point is in this table, we've got names and then we've got a separate column for the actual unique indicator for the bottle. And in this table, it's been stuck together because that's just the way I did it. So what we need to do to be able to match this particular bottle within this table, we need to be able to separate them out. We need to take that bit of it and that bit and be able to uh, use them separately. So let's close this. Let's go back to the code. And what you'll see is that's exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm saying that this variable called T ingredient name is basically everything before the underscore in the mixed ing stock name. Uh, so we we'll assign that to T ingredient name. And then basically we just get the order ID from the remainder of it. So everything after the underscore. We then uh, just assign the volume of what we used in this particular recipe to this variable tvol. And then this is where this consume list comes in. This is just something really for testing. Uh, once we've finished, once it's finished doing its stuff down here, it just pops up a message box saying what it has done, what it has consumed. So this is just adding to that list stuff that was being consumed. So I can check it's doing its thing. And then lastly, we build an SQL statement to actually update the stock table um, to change the stock used quantity to whatever the stock used quantity was before, plus the volume that we've used here, where the stock ingredient name is this bit before the underscore and the stock order ID is this bit where we took out the number after the underscore. And that will actually uniquely identify our stock bottle and it will update the used quantity by adding what we just used. Uh, then it gets executed and then we basically loop through the other ones. So mixing stock name two and mixing stock name three. So let's have a little look and see if that works. Right, so we've selected our recipe that we're going to make a mix of. We're going to click make mix. I'm going to enter a volume of this mix to be 500 and click create. We then need to go down and actually assign a bottle that we're going to use. And uh, I'll just do nicotine this time around. So we'll say 118.5833 left of that. And uh, let's see. So we're going to be consuming when we hit the consume button 20.83 of it. So let's see what that particular bottle is right now. We'll open up, open up the stock table, go down and find that specific bottle of nicotine. And there it is. And at the moment, the used quantity is 152.2 blah, blah, blah. So once we consume another, whatever it was, 20.83, this should go up to about, what, 172, about 170, just over 173, this should go up to. So let's give it a test. Let's go and scroll up, hit the consume button. It's telling us here, this is the little message box pop up saying what we've uh, consumed and we've consumed 20.83 mil of that particular bottle of nicotine. And that's all it's done because basically we didn't fill out any other ones. So let's go and make sure that that has updated. As I said, it should be about 173 and there it is. The used quantity has gone up to 173. Problem is the remaining quantity is still where it was at 118. So uh, we need to add the code in to update this one too. And I'll do that now. Right, here we are then. Essentially, this uh, subroutine for the consume button on click handler is uh, the same down to here. This is what we just did. And uh, these two lines here simply just update the remaining quantity. And uh, yeah, kind of pretty much in the same way, really. It's updating the stock table. It's setting the remaining quantity to whatever the remaining quantity was, 
minus what the volume is of what we just consumed and then it updates the database. Finally, the other thing I wanted to do is if that bottle happens to get down to zero mil remaining, then it's empty. So then basically what it's doing is it's looking up what the remaining quantity is and it's saying if the remaining quantity is less than or equal to zero, then basically set the stock is empty to one. And uh, yeah, that will be at the end here. There you go, stock is empty. So when that gets down to zero uh, remaining quantity, it's going to set this tick to, well, it's going to set the tick. It's going to make it ticked. So say that the stock is empty. And uh, yeah, so that should do it. Um, let's test this again. We will make, our, uh, we will save our changes. We'll make a mix and um, uh, well, let's do another 500 for now. Let's go down to our nicotine again and set the, the we're taking it from that bottle. Let's hit the consume button. Okie dokie. Let's have a look at the stock table and that specific bottle is there. So now you can see that our used quantity has gone up by 20.83 mil and our remaining quantity has gone down by 20.83 mil. There is some still left, so it hasn't set the stock is empty flag. So let's make it empty. Uh, at this rate, we'll need to do what? Another five of them. So let's close out of here. Let's make another mix. And this time we'll do 2,500 and we shall create. And if we go down to here, that means that we need, well, it's, how many is it? 104. 0.17 mil. Well, that's basically more than that's left. So if we set that into that one, um, so then if we go back up to the top, click consume, click OK, go back to the stock table, find that particular ingredient which is there. Obviously, we've got a minus amount on our remaining quantity, but that doesn't matter because it's set the stock to empty. Good. Close that. And I think, albeit it's a very messy looking form, but other than tarting it up looks wise, functionality, we're there. So finally, we can say that for now, the mix form is complete and uh, move on to something else next. Watching paint dry would be more interesting.